These are hertz frequencies or cycles per second that the musicians can retune their instruments to play and experiment with. Why? Again, these are the creator's musical scale, the original solfeggio, buried for 3,000 years in the Bible. So the ancient priests who knew how to levitate the huge stones for the building of the pyramids and the Masonic knowledge that predated ancient Egypt, the ability to have this information, these frequencies, serve the function of creation, destruction, and miracles on behalf of the empowered people who had access to this knowledge. I say that because of this metaphor. This is the difference between the power of the, our Creator and anything else particularly evil. That you can go into a pitch black room full of evil, full of darkness, and light a little candle, and instantly that darkness flees. But you can't do the opposite. You can't go into a well-lit room full of truth and wisdom and righteousness and joy and health and harmony with the universal power. You can't take a, any amount of darkness and go into that well-lit room and have any effect whatsoever. That is the metaphor which I frequently think of when I think that I'm not empowered. It is the greatest lesson for me and I think for everybody else to know that we're on the winning side and that we win in the end. As you are watching this, understand that it is not a fight to be fought. It is not a war to be waged. No gun rights have to be exercised. Not a finger has to be lifted. Most people wonder how one person can make a difference. They ask that if all this is so simple and this information is available, why hasn't someone else conquered their fears and changed the world for everyone else? This is the most difficult and beautiful conundrum to our lives. Your reality affects you and only you. Your curiosity has led you to this genre of information to serve a very specific purpose in your life. in control. Huh? Are you? Am I? The guards outside? The warden in his office? Yeah? Who's in control? Testing, testing, testing. One, two, three, four. Dr. Ethan Powell interviewing Dr. Theo Porter. Now, this will be a very simple test. Pass or fail, life or death. You ready, Jean? Now, you write on this paper what I have taken from you. What have you lost? Write it! Write it! had control. You only thought you had it. An illusion. Tabby bourgeois. And what do you control? For sure. Huh? The volume in your stereo, the air conditioning in your car. What else? What else? All right. Another chance. You were nervous. Too much pressure. Try again. What have you lost? What did I take? Write it. Write it! Do you think you were free? Where were you going at 2 o'clock today? Into the gym, right? In the morning, your wake-up call. In the middle of the night, when you wake up sweating with your heart pounding. What is it that has you all tied up, Jua? Tied up in little knots? Is it ambition? Yeah. 
You're no mystery to me, boy. I used to be you. Okay. One last chance. You think I won't do it? That's one psychiatrist less to the world. I'm already deep in the pit, so what can they do to me? Last try. Get it right. What have you lost? What did I take from you? Right here. Congratulations. <laughs> Good student after all. And you've lost nothing but your illusions and a little bit of skin. I want to finish this. Finish what? Telling you what I know. What makes you think what you know is any different than what other people know? I had different teachers. either accept or reject, or we translate what we hear according to our knowledge, our background, or we compare what is being said to what is already known. idea by another. All these characteristics of hearing denies the act of listening. When one listens, there is no comparison, there is no acceptance or rejection. That very act of listening brings about a total attention in which you see the totality and the whole significance and structure of what is being said. The quality of listening is attention. And when you attend totally with your whole mind, with your heart, with your nerves, with your eyes and ears completely, intensely listen. When you give your whole attention to something, that is when you are completely listening. In that state of attention, there is the act of listening. And that act of listening puts away anything that is not true. You the totality of the thing. When you attend, there is no borders of inattention. And that act of listening is a really a miracle. Perhaps it's the greatest miracle. When one can listen totally, without any defense, without any barrier, then one can look then one can listen. Look, sir, if I want to understand what you are saying, I must listen to you. I must listen to you with affection, with care, with attention. Then I want to find out what you're saying. But if I say yes, I agree with you, I've heard this before. Or you're saying something new which is impossible, you're not listening.
One of the most intriguing discoveries in modern science is the fact that there is nothing in this world that even approaches what might be called truly solid. We speak of solids, liquids, and gases. But these terms describe superficial rather than basic properties of matter. All matter, regardless of its state, is composed of invisible particles called atoms, which in turn are composed of other particles.